Picking up where the Suicide Squad left off, Peacemaker returns home after recovering from his encounter with Bloodsport, only to discover that his freedom comes at a price. Peacemaker is created for TV by James Gunn and is directed by James Gunn, Brand Anderson, Jody Hill, Rosemary Rodriguez. With our main lead as John Cena. Let's talk about my experience with Peacemaker. So right off from the jump, when I saw that opening credit scene, I thought to myself, what have I got myself into? It, this was a culture shock to say the least. And James Gunn was bringing his own panache to his interpretation of Christopher Smith with that opening of the, the musical dance choreography as the opening credits. And yeah, when I first saw it, it took me back because we're not used to seeing that kind of hard-nosed comedy just pungent straight away with it. Um, so first episode, I was like, okay, let's just see where this goes. And by the second and the third, I was right on board with everyone with that opening credit scene, dancing along with everyone else. And to further add, John Cena proves to the world that he isn't just this one trick pony, one dimensional muscle Mary. And in Peacemaker, he shows an array of different emotions with his character. And I think with John Cena's performance, he really does capture how broken and how traumatized Christopher Smith has been his, his entire life. Um, you know, he's never, he's never grown up because he still is that kid when he was, however old he was, whether he was 10 or 12, and he faced the abuse at the hands of his father. And I think how James Gunn captured that was, was brilliant. And you've got Robert Patrick being the piece of shit dad <laughs> in this TV, in this season. And, you know, kudos to him as an actor because he's terrible in every aspect. James Gunn always seems to be able to hit emotional beats with animals. And in this we have a new edition um, with Eagerly. And Eagerly and Chris, Christopher's relationship, you know, they, they produce some of the most fun and poignant moments in the season. Mern, Harcourt and Vigilante are all great new additions to Task Force X. Um, especially with um, Vigilante, um, you know, he, he's, He's like on the same spectrum, spectrum as Peacemaker, just as mad. And ah, he's definitely more of a psychopath than um, Christopher is. And, um, you know, he does a great job of just showing how sporadic and off the wall, off the wall that he can be. The action was solid throughout the season. Um, the character arc, once again, that Christopher Smith takes is exciting and it, ex it exudes and goes beyond our expectations of where we think the character is going to go. And I also liked the new additions to, um, to Peacemaker's armory and his gadgets. And, and it was another very clever way from James Gunn to um, reinvent Peacemaker from how we saw him in the Suicide Squad, and we, we see this new version take place in this season. Peacemaker is definitely a solid show, but I do think that this season does, season of TV does come with its flaws. And in doing so, um, because this show is done in its tone of dark satirical comedy, um, and you could you could also say out of left field comedy as well that comedy has a 
brilliant effect on people in the essence of it can make you forget because you're making people feel happy but in doing so you're you're <laughs> you're making people forget about um three dimensional traits first person ideologies and just simple development of characters and i think it's very important to understand that with the suicide squad and peacemaker these are they're not reboots they are continuations of how we've seen the dceu progress now why i'm bringing this up is because i see problems with characters such as adebayo and a cosmos now how we remember Amanda Waller from from Suicide Squad and the Suicide Squad um, Amanda Waller is this rough around the edges takes no shit and basically she's a type of character where she's she exudes it's my way or the highway very authoritative that's the way that she is um, not even the one to really, I've never, never really the one to crack jokes um, as well. Um, she gets shit done, basically. And for the life of me, I cannot understand why Adebayo, why Amanda Waller, of all people, where she knows how hard it is to be a part of covert operations, that she would take it upon herself to go and get Adebayo to work amongst Task Force X. Now, knowing how we've known her in the 2016 version and the 2021 version of the Suicide Squad, I can't wrap my head around that she would be the one to go pick Adebayo, knowing how she is throughout the entire season. She's forgetful, she's you know makes terrible decisions and to be quite frank with you i never resonated with that that love interest whatsoever it, it had no it wasn't poignant or effective to the plot story whatsoever that's just me um now but like i'm saying as we know how headstrong amanda Wood is would she go pick <laughs> and to be able to go work in a job like that, knowing how stringent and demanding it is. I think I'm raising a worthy question here. Um, you know, and that doesn't, and you know, James Gunn is sacrificing a character for his comedy in the sense, you know. And for me, there's only so much comedy that I can take before it gets to a point of like, come on now, you're, you're clearly taking the piss and like, you're, it's not even comedy, it's just the thing of that you're not taking it seriously, you're not taking the character seriously. I, like I would have liked to have seen them not make these terrible decisions and be forgetful and backstab people just for no gain whatsoever. Um, not even for the terms of the plot, but rather I would have liked to have seen her be a kind of, a sentiment side to where she's where she's shy and she's kind of within her shell uh, you know and because she doesn't maybe know how to communicate you know people see her as this kind of this this figure in the sense of you know oh she doesn't know herself but then the whole character arc of her is you know to bounce off each other you know and also in the sense of her being in you know having to live up to the expectation of amanda waller in a sense you know um but doing it in a way where it doesn't feel like it's just undermining the character in my opinion um, of what she could really be you know i don't like her being the butt of jokes and just it doesn't make sense and and, and amanda waller in my opinion would never put somebody in a position like that and this also leads me to talk about um, a Cosmos, the, the computer hacking guy. 
um, with the white beard. Um, I don't get how somebody... How... Look, I understand people all have their problems and... But when they're done to this degree, it just feels like you're... you're it just feels like it's tearing the arse out of it, to be honest with you. You know, how, how is it that someone can work in covert black operations and, you know, they're insecure, they're, they're, you know, you know how headstrong, you I mean, come on, man. Like, you know how headstrong you have to be to work in those positions of armed forces. I mean, like, come on, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of pointing out the obvious here, you know, but this is what I mean when we, we're talking about comedy, because it has the effect on people to make them forget about certain aspects of characters and, you know, and it all gets left astray, you know. And I do feel that in patches with, with Peacemaker that the comedy was going on for too long, like, because I feel like James Gunn realised he had a TV series to experiment with. And he's given every individual character a funny moment. But I think in, in real life, nobody's like that. You're going to get one or two people that are going to be that type of character. Obviously, Christopher Smith is going to be um, like that. And and Vigil I, I just really think they should have left the comedy aspects to Christopher Smith and Vigilante. Everyone else... Okay, some moments were funny, but when they do it, it's like, mm, I'm not feeling it, you know. Um, but like I'm saying, because he knows he's got all this time, he's throwing in too much of these jokes because he knows he's got the time to do it. When you're talking, especially with the Suicide Squad, James Gunn knows he doesn't have the time to throw in a joke because he has to think about pacing, he has to think about character decisions he has to think about how am I going to go from point a to point b but because he's you know been given nine episodes all of the decisions are revolving around comedy and it's just not it's just not adding up right and to further add as another nitpick that I had with the show was it was never explained how Christopher Smith's dad, how did he get that multi-dimensional void in his house? It's never explained, you know? And again, because I feel like James Gunn is banking on his comedy, which I do love in moments, even the, the aspect of the villains, the butterflies, you know, they come from an off world and they need this and they need that. You know, it's hard to really, I felt like it was missing another layer with those villains. Um, but nonetheless, I still enjoyed it. And I'm going to talk spoilers now for the finale of Peacemaker. So if you have not watched Peacemaker, go away, come back. Um, and so you can just watch this final little segment of what I've got to say here. So I'm going to talk spoilers now about the finale. Um, I felt like the finale with, as you know, if you've seen it, the introduction of the Justice League, I kind of felt like that was half-baked, man. Like, I just, I just don't know if that, if, if it was the right time to have the induction of the Justice League. It's cool that we now know that Peacemaker, Justice League, it, they all exist in the same universe. I do find that exciting. But also, I just feel like what could have rolled off a little bit better if they had, in some way, if they had Aquaman, I don't know, like if they just had Aquaman and the Flash there, I think that would have been enough. Because this whole revolving situation with Henry Cavill, whether or not he is Superman or not Superman. And then, I mean, Gal Gadot wasn't even there as Wonder Woman. So you're thinking, you know, what are they just doing? You know, everything with the DCEU just feels up in the air with, you know. Um, we don't know if they're taking it seriously or if they're not. You know, the, you know, the fact that they just, 
they've got a double of a lookalike of Henry, Henry Cavill floating in the background. He's completely dark out. You know, it's kind of like, it, it just doesn't, I just don't know how to feel about it. And I'm sure a lot of the Snyder fans felt the same way. You know, if you're just a, a fan of everything, you, you know, you can look at it as a prospect like, wow, Peacemaker, Justice League, they're all in the same universe now. And that is fun. I mean, potentially, we are going to see Peacemaker and Black Adam, John Cena, Dwayne Johnson in the same universe together, you know. And, and I think that's kind of poetic in the sense that John Cena, when he was, you know, when he was growing up, he always looked up to um, Dwayne Johnson, you know. And I think that's just, it's got that quality of it that it's written in the stars, you know. And it, it is kind of a, kind of a cool story within itself. But I'll say this, Peacemaker was solid. I enjoyed it. Also a very clever thing to release this during January, the most depressing month of the entire year. It's a comedy. I thought that was a little, you know, that was a, that was a big brain move from Warner Brothers. Um, you know, so kudos to them. It wrapped in people to watch it. I enjoyed it. I still think there's a lot to improve on, but it's a solid start at the very least. Um, and if you are a DC fan, check it out. Um, but yeah, that's what I've got to say for Peacemaker, people. And um, check out the description. I am part of a short film coming up during the end of March. Four-day shooting schedule for a naturalistic drama about Tourette's. An issue-based piece, an issue-based short film. We've got a GoFundMe. You can donate there and learn more about the project there. And I'll, it's in the description, so check that out. Check out the description for more videos as well. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.